Hey, this is your girl Chelsea back with the Melanin University, and I am back with my girl Cassie. Hi, it's your girl Cassie, and here today we have some special guests. We have Tori from Pittsburgh, Booker from Macon, Georgia, Daryl from Cleveland, Ohio, Bree from Valdosta, Georgia, and Ronnie from Chicago. How are y'all doing today? Another great day in paradise. <laughs> doing good. Same. And I want to thank everybody for actually coming out today and being able to give your time for another topic of discussion. So basically, um, what we wanted to talk about were the past cases that went on in the last decade. As everyone knows, uh, the most recent case that has actually come up has been Kendrick Johnson. However, I've been aware of it basically happened back in 2013. Um, has everyone been well aware of that case? And anyone have any thoughts? Not any that haven't been already been expressed. I mean, bullshit is bullshit. I don't know how. I don't understand how you, land, how you say that someone puts themselves in a mat and rolls them up. Yeah, I remember. I was actually living in Valdosta when it happened. And it was just a weird vibe. Like, what they were telling the public didn't match up to what seemingly happened because it's he climbed into a rolled up mat and got stuck. And that's what was told. And there were there were other leads and it just feels like they didn't follow up. One of the biggest leads was the sheriff's son had something to do with it, which is why it wasn't investigated properly. But it just left a weird vibe over the city because it's like, how did it happen? Why isn't anything being done about it? And it left hurt as long as I was there. But it, like I said, it's a weird vibe just over the city. It definitely has. I know I've had, I wasn't living here. So, I mean, since you were actually here, I know the feeling around the city had to be extremely different. I mean, just being down South period, I mean, we're used to, I guess, you know, getting a lot more comments than we would preferably up North because where I'm from, we really don't get, I guess, a lot of people like in your face or even things like that in our hometown that actually have happened. Um, what I do want to ask, I know uh, Bree. now Kendrick's yeah. family, are they related to you or you just know them personally? Because I know I wanted to clarify. I am actually a Thule. His mother, um, his mother is a Thule and her and my my father so it's like in that also you know it's, it's hundreds of us like we come out of droves we're probably one of the largest families here in that so the family alone can create a voice but um with me personally i went to lounge time and i cheered so we've rolled those mats up before there's no way one you can roll those, the way those mats are rolled in stacks they're rolled tight enough and then we put velcro on them just so they they aren't a safety issue so the way that they say he got in there it could not have happened i mean just just the thought that they would make they would believe that people would believe that is crazy but i mean i'm i'm very happy that his mother is not giving up because she needs the truth about how her child died um and i just think it's awful how how the city is handling it. They want to shut them up and they're using by any means necessary to shut them up. Like there was a lawsuit out against the family. Like the, the city sued the family. Like that, that's crazy. I've never seen cases like that. Where, you know, somebody's child wrongfully dies, but because their parents are trying to find answers, the city decides to do that. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't understand either. Like, they're suing them for like what six fifty or something. Yeah, and all I all I want to find is justice for their baby. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have enough. Uh -huh. 
their his mom worked for the county, the very the very school system that her child died in. She was working for the county at the time. She was a bus driver for the county. She lost her job. Um, so I feel like that was retaliation, if nothing else. <clears throat> and then I don't understand how they wouldn't let his sister get his diploma for the graduation ceremony. I just feel like crazy. she was banned off the campus. That's the crazy thing. They banned his sister off of the campus. So she wasn't allowed to walk for grace. Yeah, because she yeah, she couldn't even do her go to her own graduation. That's just sad. That's suspicious right there, I feel like. In itself. <laughs> now just to, add, just to add to it. It is. It really is. I mean, everything about the whole case is suspicious. How you stuffed the boy's body with newspapers, then the camera footage was altered at the actual high school. I mean, look at the pictures of his face. The pictures of his face, like, that's forever burnt in my mind. Forever. Like you can't un like the photos that and I could just imagine me just having a child and just seeing them like that just laying anywhere and having that just broadcasted and then nothing be done about it at all. Do you have to release the photo of him? I do not. Like I, I was wondering more so. Um, was it law enforcement or, you know, was it a decision that the family made kind of similar to um, Emmett Till to make a statement, you know, to push people forward? Because I know up here, we only slightly heard about it. Um, I remember it sounding really crazy. And then it just kind of, it went away. The media never talked about it again, so. And that's what I what like why was it getting like it got attention so i was excited that you know okay maybe something that they're they're going to do something and that and for years now nothing has actually happened and i felt like i know that booker you said that his the the two boys that were supposedly well, well that were involved in the act um now i read that their father was ex fbi was he currently working for the sheriff's department at that time or was he just or was, was that misinformation? From what I remember hearing about the situation as being locally in the area, you hear things. And one of the, I don't want to say theories, but one of the hypotheses was that the sheriff's son in some magnitude, the sheriff's family member, whether it be son or nephew, someone of that magnitude was involved. Mm -hmm. And that's why things just halted because that's something that the police should have investigated, the investigators, detectives, and it's it's still shocking how it just stopped. It didn't make it to the GBI. It didn't make it to a federal level. It just stopped. And for this to happen on a public school, because Lowndes, the Lowndes County, it's the actual, the county school, for it to happen and just stop, it's odd. And then it makes you wonder, what if Kendrick was Kenneth from North, from North Valdosta, who went to Valwood? What if, would it, would it take seven years for mass media to say, hey, this is a problem. This is what we've been talking about. Makes you wonder. It does. It definitely does. I know another case that I've actually made me wonder was the woman that was found in the deep freezer at a hotel. Now, I know my sister actually followed the case for two years. I don't know if anyone here actually has. I remember seeing things of that it was an accident, but then the way that the camp, like what I was seeing with the different images where her body was being moved before it was actually found, 
that's what made it really suspicious to me. Like, how do you have the hotel carrying your body out? But then you were also with friends. It seems kind of suspect because some of the, like, why would your friend let you get into that certain circumstance if you were inebriated in any time of way? I forgot. That whole, that whole case is confusing. Cause it's like, they were saying something about her body being a deep freezer, then they were saying it was a, a, a bag. And, but when you You're talking about family, Shanika. Yeah. I'm not mistaken. That's her name. Shanika. Oh, that's her name. Shanika. Okay. I think we have to unmute her. I think she's. I think she doesn't like muted. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. My bad. I keep muting each other's it's loud. Okay. Here. Oh, we know the trend work. <laughs> I was saying that I thought that was really questionable. And I feel like every everybody that was present at that time should have been taken in question because nobody just disappeared and ends up in the freezer dead. And they have videos of what seems to be her staggering down the hallway. Chelsea, I don't care where we go. If I don't see you for more than five or ten minutes, I'm looking for you. I need to lay eyes on you. Mm -hmm. We came together, we leave together. So I, I don't the know text I'm message. The hootie hoo in the air. Make <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, like, what's the point of the buddy system? We're at the gym. If you, if you go out of my sight too long at the gym, I'm looking around. Okay, where she go? So, I don't know. I don't, I feel like everybody is suspect in that case because the friends <laughs> seem kind of, I don't know no friends that's going to let me walk off. No, no true friend. And I know we all grew up with the buddy system. That's something that we learned in elementary school, like, you know, on field trips. You have a buddy. I always had a buddy. Or we had a group of chaperones. I had a group of kids, and we knew who our group was. Or in that case, I would never. <sighs> My friends will try for me. That's all yeah. I got. And then the whole thing was suspect as well. Like, how do you have employees touching a dead body to move it? And why are they putting it in the freezer? They probably didn't want that attention on their hotel. That's bad business. But still, that's a human life. But still, that's a human life that you just simply disregard and then put in a freezer like it was a meat sack. I just don't know how her friends could just, like, live with that. Not even just, like, coming forward and, like, saying what actually happened that night or anything like that like how like even like a girlfriend like even if i wasn't super close with a another girl like i would never be able to just like live my life with all of that oh so yeah. sorry you bringing that up it makes me think how far do you go with street code because when you read about the fact that they can't find certain people because they only have street names or they've talked to 30 something people i think it was 38 people that were there but nobody seems to know anything how far do you go with living and dying by a street code and then my thing is, if it was one of their family members, they would want everybody. Yeah. But if you only know a certain amount of people, you can buy their street name, how far is anyone really going to get? That is a good question. Just based on, I know I've seen situations where some people know things but they don't say what was what's necessary to help solve the case per se and honestly i can't answer that because i've never been in a situation of such i would think that i'm not here to protect violence when life is lost and i think because of such life being so precious myself, I would have to say something because a life 
a life is lost and they are parents that had to bury their child. It, that gets lost, that gets lost in, in the thought of it where someone has to bury this child. A parent has to grieve for the rest of their life and it has to be magnifying when you don't know what happened. And on that regard, something should be said because again, we would all want closure. No matter how horrific, we would all want to know how it ended to just not have that confusion and just the uncertainty just loom, loom and linger. So myself, I would have to say something. Street code be damned. I feel you on that. I'm snitching too. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 how... I'm snitching. I'm, I'm snitching. When it comes to these lives, uh, I'm not trying to lose any more. So if I know any information... And if it's anything that needs to be, I'm definitely sitting there saying something. I don't, I don't care how it looks. I mean, how can you not say something? Like somebody, somebody died. There was the, you, you have there some, at some point morally, aren't you like, all right, th this was wrong. I may not have known everything, but I know something. Somebody knows something. You, you may not know all the details, but you know some of them. Somebody, and the fact that nobody is saying anything is really, it's, it's awful. And I know there's, there's just thousands of cases that go on that we don't even, that haven't even got any, tele, like that haven't had any coverage at all, that are in small towns or even big cities that are just overlooked because of what's being on mass media right now, like what what's currently being shown on TV. And another thing, we need to learn how to do research ourselves because not everything that's shown on the media is the truth, which we all know. Yeah, one thing that, yeah, one thing that does help is with social media sharing things. Yeah. Because with what happened to Ahmaud Aubrey, I I feel bad that I didn't know about it until the tapes came out as well. Yeah. Because when it happened, I was in San Diego. And so I thought, like, why didn't I even hear about this? I was in San Diego. And it's odd that I didn't see it on my on my social media. And it fell by the wayside just that fast. And if there wasn't any video footage, we would still never know. Mm -hmm. And that's important. It, I think it does fall to us, fall upon us to share information. Because we all we all have friends spread far and wide. And that's something that would just help bring awareness because you never know who sees what. Six degrees of separation is real. Yeah, that's true. Because I didn't even know about, you know, Brianna Taylor until I looked at my social media, looking at Facebook and Instagram. That situation is crazy in itself as well. Like, how do you shoot? And she was an officer, correct? Was or she? She, she, she was a she was an EMT that was sleeping. Uh -oh. Paramedic, yeah, EMT. And then they busted what? in the house because there was a suspect that was in the area, or they just said that there was a. What was the whole there, reasoning? Because they were they were supposedly looking for a suspect, but the suspect was already in custody. Yes. yes. And yeah, then so they, they did a no knock warrant. Do it. Yep, no knock warrant. And um, the the neighbor said they didn't hear anything. They didn't hear anything. They just thought somebody was busting in. And I, I mean, I just don't. I, I don't get it. I don't. How are you as a as a police force supposed to be supposed to be respected if you can't do something as simple as know who you have in your own custody? Like that right. seems like a phone call kind of thing. Like, My hey, phone guys, we got them. I think that's what they report when they have the the, the, the suspect in custody. Like, don't they do the little bleep bleep thing? Yeah, suspect. <laughs> that's what they're supposed to do. Yes. So, how are you looking for someone that you already have? Uh, again, I'm not sure. But the this is what we have to do when. Black lives are lost. Inconsistencies. Never being noticed or even taken advantage. No one's ever being there for us. So the best thing I feel like 
I can do to participate and share everything. Anything that I feel like is going to help on my social media, that's why I want to do these videos because someone's going to see it, someone's going to watch it. Maybe they take it, you know, upon themselves to educate themselves the way that they need to be educated because that's the only way that we're going to be able to get anywhere. It's basically sharing everything. And it's sad that we have to come to that, but it's also quite helpful because I know when people start picking up their phones and recording things, I know my sister is one of the first ones that records everything that she comes in contact with, <laughs> whether it be good or bad. But it's sad that we have to do that in this day and age. To get any type of justice It, it is sad, and unfortunately, it's the hand that we're dealt. Um, but at this point in time, we know how to play the game. So I think it's about time we start using that to our advantage and uh, not repeating the same mistakes over and over. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Got a one-year-old. If anybody, if anybody wants a little, a little terrorizer. <laughs> I'm good. I have a seven and a three year old. I am good. Um, right, Y'all can come to Cleveland or, or or I'll ship them for free. It's totally, <laughs> totally up to you. How, okay, so what I do want to know, I know everyone's in different parts of the country right now. I want to know what recently has been going on around you guys. I know that we've had some protests as far as some riots, but I just didn't know if there was an update that you guys want to give around your like community about what's been going on. I know I did see Ronnie the other day. She, you were at an actual event, which I'm I was interested in. I want to know more about that. I was at where? I can't. An remember. event. I saw it was on. Oh, live. I, I went to two protests on Sunday. Okay. Um. They had one in Gary, which was very peaceful, very nice. Um, Sin City Disciples came out as security. Like, okay. Oh, okay. I see y'all. <laughs> they surrounded the entire area. Like, okay. Yeah, I'm feeling it. Um, and, oh my goodness. I, you let I wish I could remember the name of the Baptist Coalition. For people that don't know, can you let people know who Sin City Disciples are who don't know? <laughs> well, see, I can't say that I know who they are either because remember, I'm from Chicago, not from Gary. So, you know, but I know, I know a, a biker gang when I see one. You know, they all roll up together. It's like, okay, when you kind of came to park, they all came, rolled through on the motorcycles. I'm like, What's going on for a minute? And then I realized, oh, okay, they're here to protect us. Good shit. Like, <laughs> hey, Chelsea, I'm just going to throw this out there really quickly. If somebody here is Sin City Disciples and don't know that that's some type of gang or organized <laughs> association, then they probably shouldn't be listening to this because it's going to be a whole bunch more stuff that's going to go over their head. So I'm just going <laughs> to exactly. put that little disclaimer out there. <laughs> exactly. Um, the second one was in Lake Station, which is like a, a blip on the map. I mean, I know you know, Chelsea, yeah. but it's a blip on the map out here in Northwest Indiana. It was right up the street from Gary, so we went there. And that one was very interesting because um, I, I ended up having to leave early, but we wanted to march. They wouldn't let us march. Um, the police were surrounding us. I mean, they had snipers on top of City Hall, like guarding so the entire bad. thing. And I felt, and they had police all through the crowd and I felt like it was twofold. Sin City Disciples was, was going around the area too. They kept coming through and rolling by, but um, it was kind of like, the police were out there to protect us from Lake Station, because from what I've heard, Lake Station is extremely racist. It is. But at the same time, they were out there to keep us in check because they didn't want us to move or protest in the way that we wanted to. Mm. That one was very interesting. 
but I loved it. It was a nice, nice, very diverse crowd. It's exactly what we need to get some change. We need, you know, shake some shit up, make some things happen. We can't be out there alone. So, um, oh yeah, and you asked what's going on. I, I have not, I know Chicago was a mess at first when the riot started. Um, it started a mess with the internally within the city. Uh, but I don't know if I want to spread any spotlight on just so that no yes, one. Yes, please. You Chicago. must know. This is why we need to know that because I, I don't know what's going on in Chicago. So the, the internal mess was just that uh, Chicago is a very segregated city, probably the most segregated city in the country to be so large. Everybody has their own neighborhood and territory and everything like that. So the riots that happened, um, I was out of town at the time, but I know the National Guard ended up coming out. Um, and it caused a lot of tension between the gangs and um, just neighborhoods in general, because people then started to feel like they needed to protect their neighborhood from looting. Um, but Mayor Lightfoot, you know, she she got a stronghold on the city, so she calmed all of that down. Um, but more recently, the most recent thing that I've heard in Indianapolis, someone was shot in a protest. I think that that's the kind of stuff that we need to be aware of is, you know, now we're out here, we're protesting um, against police brutality and violence. And um, it is, we're actually seeing the police react violently, which is kind of hard for me as the child of a retired police officer um, to see police act in such a way. So. I think that's something that we really have to pay attention to and and call the police out on those kind of injustices. Um, I, I saw a lady on the news, I don't remember where she was yesterday, but she was shot in the face with a rubber bullet at a protest. And it's ridiculous. Um, so. And those rubber bullets hurt. Like they, like just oh. the pictures that I'm seeing. Oh yeah, her face was black. Face, Yes, her face was black and blue. Two black eyes, looked like her nose was almost broken. It was horrible. It was horrible. And there was a peaceful protest. No one was looting. They weren't rioting. It, but police came out, just started shooting at the crowd. And, and then to find out in Indianapolis, they actually shot somebody. So it's. I just don't understand if there's peaceful protests, then what's the point in shooting people that are not doing anything? Like I can see if like somebody was like, actually breaking in stuff, like stuff is going on. But if people are moving peacefully in one area, going to one point from one direction to the other, and they're not bothering anyone. Girl, I don't care if I am breaking into a business right now. It doesn't give you the right to take my life. Very true. So me, a, a robbery of some sort or theft, whichever one it is, um that does not constitute the right to shoot me and take my life so find find a better way at the end of the day the business wouldn't be it, it wouldn't be getting fucked up if people were listening without all of that. and certain measures cause for certain things to happen yeah this this is um it mimics the climate uh, during apartheid in South Africa. Sadly, this is, you know, I'm not necessarily condoning that, oh, people should go loot or we should tear things up. But at the same time, I realized that it's a part of the process. You know, you'll have the peaceful protests, you'll have the people that are looting, you'll have all of that. It's a part of the process to move us to where we need to be for the better. Do you say you have so, a son or a daughter? Who, me? Yes. Um, I have a wild little boy. And he He's letting us know right now. Like, yeah, go yeah. out there and get it so his life will be totally different. That's, 
that's that's that is the plan. The goal is to not have them have the same conversations at this age that that I am, because that would mean that you know another thirty years have passed and we haven't gone anywhere, um, which is not something that that we want. I will. I'm not a, a proponent of violence. Okay, let me just throw that out there. However, I find it hard looking back through history to try to figure out what was soft without it. I mean, if I go all the way back to the first recorded history, I find it, I'm, as I'm looking through from Mesopotamia to Egypt to ancient Chinese, I, 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 I always see disputes solved with violence. So That's I'm like a big Yeah. I'm a bit confused as to when exactly it didn't solve a solution. Let's not let's not forget they like to call the greatest generation, you know, the generation that fought in a war. And they didn't try to solve that with diplomacy or nonviolence, did they? When so I I I, I feel like that's a two that's a a, a a coin. There are two sides to that coin. There definitely nothing happened until people got angry and started messing shit up. All right. It was a whole bunch of oh people are upset. But then when action started, action started. You know. Again, I'm not vouching for it, but how come it takes a couple of buildings to be destroyed and some cars to be set on fire? for the action that should have been taken years ago. And definitely once, you know, these things were exposed for it to happen. We live in a capitalistic society, money talks. Indeed it does. Mm -hmm. Tori, has anything been going on in Pittsburgh? Yeah, there was um, protest, so right after you know, when all, I feel like all of the protests and the marches started, um, Pittsburgh was pretty on edge. Um, there was a lot of like rioting um, at first. It was really bad for a couple days. Um, and then it got peaceful. Um, I think protests are still going on. It lasted quite a while. And I, my Instagram and social media feeds were just like flooded with, you know, pictures of groups of just people just marching all over the city and it was honestly amazing to see um it really was and you know it's all people like our age it's just people who want change and it was awesome to see but um yeah the last couple of days it's been really peaceful um they like the first day i think someone set a cop car on fire so yeah i think i did hear about that as far yeah. as like, horses being stolen, police horses being yeah. stolen. <laughs> Something, who knows? Um, but yeah, no, it's been um it's been good good here. I mean the whole city is it's pretty much, you know, rallying behind it. Now, do you plan to go out to any of the actual protests at all? Um, so I was currently closing my sh my business when um all of the protests and stuff were happening so i wasn't able to get to any of them um i absolutely plan to go i have a couple friends that have gone um in other cities across the country like in atlanta and stuff like that so i was like hell yes sign me up for a protest i will be there <laughs> i think that they're having some poor vabastasy i know i missed the first one because i was currently at work when it was going on <laughs> I definitely want to go out. I don't care if it's in a different city, but yeah. I definitely want to take some time out this weekend if I know that there's anything local that I can do, like, or even just setting up my own protest. Like, I don't even know how to do that, but I'm willing to learn how to find out. So this is all a learning experience, but I'm definitely with it. Um, how's Cleveland been, Daryl? Wow. It's Cleveland, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Cleveland. Um, it's calmed down. It's definitely calmed down. They had uh, pretty much the whole downtown district 
bored it off after after a few days. Um, you know, we've had our we've had our own issues here from Tamir Rice to cops firing 167 bullets into a car that backfired. Um, so we necessarily uh, we've been ready and. I know y'all, you know, I know people who've never been here or anything, you know, you usually hear Cleveland as the as a butt of a joke. But it's wild as shit. Um <laughs> and uh we stay ready. So they right now, right now things are things are, are calm, calmer, which is nice. But there is definitely a um I ain't never encountered so many friendly police officers. I'll tell you that much. It is, I, I tell you, they all been, hello, how you doing? Every time, every time I walk past, because this, this is definitely a place where it's, it's a, uh, it can be quite volatile. Definitely with the police. I know the police there, up there have, have always had, police here have an issue still. That's why I really, I'm not comfortable even being out in public with any of them here per se in the city, I just don't, I get nervous. I don't feel like I should get nervous around a police officer no matter what color they are, but it doesn't matter as long as I see that bet, it makes me nervous because I don't know if this is the day that I'm gonna lose my life or someone that's with me is gonna lose their life or something's gonna happen to us. Um, but I definitely know that Cleveland has an issue with police officers. From uh, you know, past it's, experiences, <laughs> it's crazy because it's gotten to the point where I was like, <clears throat> "Do I ride with my gun? Do 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 I do I, do I keep do I invoke that? Do I just keep it tucked because I don't? At this point in time, I'm I'm. I, do I even take that chance? You know, if it starts to become if they start to become aggressive, do I just go ahead and say fuck it? I'll take my chances in court. Like, like, what do, what, what am I supposed to do so that way I can make it home to my son? Because I've been shown a lifelong history of them doing things to people who look like me that are beyond inhumane. Oof, that is a good question. What do I was do? just about to come to you because I know. I know you being in not a big major city, but just somewhere that I know is well known because I mean, most people know where Macon, Georgia is, um, since it's so close to Atlanta. Macon, there have been protests. There have been peaceful protests. It's been a handful where they're usually gathering. They we are usually gathering the city hall, and it's been peaceful. It's been just a good vibe, barbecues. Police have been out, they've been peaceful. And you can tell the buzz in the city is that it hurt everyone in a sense. And it is great to have a mixture of people, people in general showing that, hey, this is wrong. I saw a guy, he had a sign up, Black Lives Matter, it was a white guy posted up next to Chick-fil-A. That's that's progress. And ironically, that particular Chick-fil-A, which is it's in the north part of town where all the money seems to go these days in cities, everything goes north yeah. and leaves other communities in shambles. But this particular Chick-fil-A, they actually had a sign that said Black Lives Matter. And it was impressive, even around here in this area, to think they're independently understanding that, hey, right is right and wrong is wrong. But it's been, it's been peaceful. We here just are still seeing racism. It's still prevalent. Every so often, someone, a county official, will say something disparaging or something despicable. And we have to realize that hey no matter what happens there are people that are still going to feel the same way and they're deeply embedded in this particular city so it's nice to see a collective force to say what are we going to do about bettering the city and it couldn't have happened at a better time because we just had elections so at the as the state of georgia 
a lot of this unfortunately happening, it happened at a time where change can be enacted and it won't take a while. We can start change now. We have the power. But that's making. Thank you so much for the update on everyone, where you guys are living. It's actually glad to see that everyone's still having the protests. I feel like they're going to still go on for a long time. Um, I mean, I feel like they should go on as long as, like, you know, until we get the point across. Because Keep the pressure up. Keep the yeah. pressure up. Keep the pressure up. Pressure, that, that, that's the main point. You just have to keep applying pressure. People need to keep educating themselves. Like, it has to be a word. It's everyone. It's not just one set of, set of race. It's everyone. Everyone needs to come together and join in and help. I mean. There, there's another video going around where a, an officer killed a guy who said he couldn't breathe, and the officer said he didn't care. And we need to keep the pressure. Uh, we need to, as they said, as somebody mentioned, keep sharing everything that's possible. We have to keep the pressure up because the moment we relax and be like, cool, back it's to normal. Cool to keep doing and, and, and we can't very we can't have a back to normal. There should be a new normal. Yes. So where where is this video? Where where are they at? I don't know. So let me tell you, I've been having issues. So we had a real bad storm here yesterday. It knocked my mm -hmm. power out. And as Chelsea would tell you, because I called her earlier, my phone been tripping. It's been like ghost touching. Okay. <laughs> we uh, had to play after the know what ghost touching is. <laughs> I know what ghost Basically, touching what is. it is, is I just paid my iPhone off and Apple and Verizon like, no, nah, fuck you. You're going to buy a new phone. <laughs> what, so what phone that's, you have? that's the 10. Okay, it's time to upgrade. Well, it's not time to upgrade, but I mean, you just upgrade it's, your phone. Just you see, you see how you see, you see how these employees. You see, they ain't got a brainwash. You see that? That's no. no I'm trying to tell people: no. you get, you get out of your iPhone. You get about six, six years, six good years out of one iPhone. So, like my it's little, it hasn't been six years. I know. So that means you just need to either factory reset your phone and do a restore from backup. Or call me back and we can keep working on this stuff together. Like that that's why I said I'm your friendly Apple tech that does not currently work for Apple anymore. I'm not gonna lie, I got a good like good six years out of my iPhone four. I didn't upgrade. I had the iPhone four from like two thousand and ten to like seventeen almost seventeen. Yeah, take, take me back to my take me back to my thought EC. Okay, cause that <laughs> thing never, that thing never let me down. Okay, I went from I went from my my little five C to this to this ten, and it's take me back to my thirty C. Um, well, totally the 10 fine. did have some issues though, so you might want to see if there's a, a a recall. Yeah, that's what they call them. Recall on your phone. You can check the website on um, getsupport.apple.com. But, <laughs> okay, so shameless <laughs> Apple plug over. <laughs> right. wow, did, they, did they sponsor this? <laughs> just, no, you just, just, just to let everyone know, this video is not sponsored by Apple in any way. <laughs> but that's why I can't tell you where it's from because when I tried to click on it, my phone then tried to FaceTime my boss, which I didn't want because I wasn't even at work. So that's the, <laughs> that's the whole story of. That is, that is why I can't tell you where it was. That, is that, that's, the, that's is that the video it. of the guy that he was saying that he had congenital heart failure? I didn't get a chance to watch it. I didn't get okay. a chance to see it. Okay. I, I, I just saw the blurb and I, I know which one you're talking about, Tori. That, yeah. I know that happened in the Southwest Oof. area, either like Arizona or New Mexico. Okay. I read about oh, that and then there was... That happened, I don't know if it happened last year. I think it happened last year. So I remember what? hearing last about year? that because the, yeah, because the, I'll, I'll look for the story and I'll send it to everybody. But I remember yeah. reading about that because the officer had something inscribed in his gun that was yeah. pretty offensive. So that was that. And then I remember a story about a guy named Tony in Dallas that happened almost four years ago. 
and he was murdered in a similar manner to George Floyd. I think his name was Tony Timba or Timba. Yeah. But it happened back in August, and I've seen I've seen that start making waves. So to me, it doesn't matter whom is the victim because it's a civil issue. This is civil injustice or civil injustice that a civilian was murdered at the hands of police, whether he be black, white, any race, creed, color, sexual orientation. It's, we, it needs to get out despite everything. So then maybe others or people that don't agree with the message will stop saying, oh, it's a black issue or all lives matter. But no, we're losing black lives. But if we're losing any life, let's make it known. Unfortunately, it's just more black people than anyone else. I want to do what I want to also uh, touch on real quick before we end. Where's these body cams? Like I'm thinking these body cams were supposed to actually help. At least we can actually see who. So I want to know where the body cam was on the officers with George Floyd. Like. Why like, can't be turned off? That, they should not be able to turn them off. I feel like there should be a rule or a law that's passed that they cannot be allowed to turn it off unless you use in the bathroom. And we gotta have proof. Like you gotta walk up to the stall. They consider a bill, I think, on Tuesday for that, so that they won't be able to turn them off because legally, by law, anytime you use a videotape, it must be continuous. You cannot show bits and pieces of the tape even if there's something very illegal in there the law will come and usurp it is not continuous so it's not admissible it's in for evidence mm -hmm. thank you for that because i didn't even know that they did to pass some law but that definitely should have been passed anyway because i thought i thought that already was passed that's why i was kind of surprised like okay so why are we consistently still having these murders not being even brought to light and the, the cameras are there because i thought that's what was supposed to help so that yeah. whenever an officer is actually doing something that they were not trained to do or using excessive force they could actually train him or reprimand him or fire him because i mean we're, we're not going to get through to these very cuts because the cops are not turning on their on, on each other apparently and we need them to start doing that too but then you also have the, that are, the ones that are being recommended are still working. Yeah. Most they have multiple complaints, but they're still there. They still have a job. On tax dollars. Why is every department not reviewing every officer that they have and letting everyone go with any sort of of continuous history of repeat offense? Why why is that, that not happening? Nationwide in every in every department. Why is it not? Because the GOB network still exists. Still strong. Mm -hmm. Which is why we have to keep up the pressure. We've seen it. We've seen it this week. We've seen the messages, whether we believe the company or not. They're out there. And they've never been out there before, which means, which means that something is, we're being heard. Mm -hmm. We are being heard. But now things, again, we talked about a couple, well, whenever that was, action. It's all about action now. It is. Yeah, the saddest part to me, um, thinking of like legislation, how is it that right now we have to fight to make lynching a hate crime in 2020? Why is that not already considered a hate crime? Killing of a black person is not considered a hate crime, even though you target them specifically for being black. That's crazy. That, how is that even? So are we not, I guess we're not a protected class. Now we have to fight to genuinely be a protected class. Yeah, someone forgot. Three is human. They made, they enacted in law and then repealed it and didn't make changes to society for it. But it is crazy. How did it take till 2020 to say, you know what, lynching, 
I think that's a hate crime. I we still don't even crime. have the deal sealed yet. Like, yeah. It's, it's or, still not even said. Yeah. On the with the federal, it's actually it was a uh, it's federal now about body cams being being um being taken a look into body cam reform because before it was left on a state by state level, which is why you would hear certain states say, "Well, body cams are suggested, but we we don't mandate it, or we only mandate the officer to record the actual arrest and not the entire situation." No. But now it has been federally mandated. So that's a good thing. But again, why do we leave it to the states for so long? Yeah. I mean, they own public dollars. So they, they every every minute that they work in, they, they're on each one of our dollars. So you know what? I don't care. Yeah, I want to know what you're doing. What, what, what are you doing? Yeah. All day. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if you ain't doing it all day. What you doing? Okay. <laughs> you're playing with my money. All right. Because in Gary, I used and... to see, see cops on Facebook at stoplights. I, and I took a picture and posted it on Facebook. I'm like, so this man did not see the man that was speeding and almost hit me, but he on Facebook. Oh, girl, Again. Gary has his own little hidden hidden secrets going on right now. They, they have some things that have um, come up. <sighs> yeah. The Northwest Indiana will always. You have to. You have. To, we have to like understand. I think people have to understand, even while we're fighting for these things, that there's levels to this shit. Like you have to understand levels to legislation and levels to laws. Understand what's what's happening in your circuit court, the things that are a law or a municipal code of your county, versus the things that are the law of your state, versus the things that are federal, and so if we continue we do have to continue to, to push to get things to be federal um just to ensure that these states will abide by them because the united states likes to do exactly what trump did with coronavirus we'll leave every state up to whatever they want to do we don't want to take the power from the states how, how well has that done for us how well is that serving us even right now so it's the same thing with these laws to protect us and protect our human rights. The Constitution wasn't written for us, but it's ambiguous enough that we're going to make it for us because we're native to this land and it needs to protect us. So we, we just have to keep pushing, like Daryl said. Just don't let, don't let the ball drop. Just keep putting that pressure on them until we get everything that we want. We squeeze every everything. single last drop out of this country. Everything. Every we we better get <laughs> all this blood, all the tears, all the sweat that our ancestors put into this country to build this and make it what it is today. We just better keep pushing and get it back and get back what's ours. Or at least make sure that the future for our children, you know, since many of us are parents, at least Three of y'all, I know, are parents. Um, you know, it's four of you guys. I, I know I'm making. Oh, Tori, your mom too. I think, okay, so I think me and Tori, me and Tori are the only ones without children. Oh, okay, right you now. say there are four of us total. Okay, yes. So <laughs> for the four of us that are parents, we have to get out here. We have to fight. We have to sign these petitions. We have to keep sharing these things on social media. We we have to keep sharing just everything that we can find and get our hands on in any which way or form that we can, form or fashion, because I do not want my babies. I, I have a son and a daughter, and I'm afraid for both of them. I, as a mom, I don't want to, I would like to just live a life of, you know, the normal fear that, okay, tell them to watch out for the white van you know, on this around the block or no, don't, take, don't fall friend. and crack your head open type of stuff, but not that the police officer up the street didn't realize that we're the neighbor and why are you getting in that car? Boom. That's it. It's, it's crazy how our manual is like this thick and there is just like this <laughs> yes. it, it's crazy the amount of conversations we have to have versus the amount that it never even crosses their mind I 
I actually do appreciate everyone for coming out today. I understand that you guys all have busy schedules, and I do thank you for the time that you have given. I think this has actually been a great conversation. Um, like you said before, we're just going to keep on applying pressure, keep on sharing everything, like this video. <laughs> I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to look it up on my iPad because that's not, that's not tripping. You're going to find what on your iPad? The video. Is that what you're talking about? Were you talking about me in the video? I, I was not about? talking about you, but you now that you bring share it up, video. I do remember you didn't share oh, the you video about the last video? time. Oh, yes. damn. I haven't told on myself. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to have our outro by DJ Baby Dash. There you go. I did it. Thank you. <laughs> there, you, there you go. Right, Tell the people bye bye, guys. For another episode of the Melanie University. Thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you bye -bye. next time.